Okay, this is part of the uh, the job that um, you may or may not want to take on. It depends how you know how you feel about taking a bit of plumbing on, really. Um, but this is the stage where we're going to fit this element into this tank, and it's going to go into this feed here. So I'm going to drain this cylinder out of the hose outside. Turn the valve off first, of course. Drain it out, and we're going to just disconnect this. And using this T, we're going to push this all in and make this fit up. And I'll show you how to do that. If um, you're really not sure about doing this part, you, you could always get a plumber, get a local chap in to fit this element for you, and then it's done because uh, the actual solar panel and the wiring is all fairly quite simple and straightforward. Um, this is probably the dip most difficult part. Um, now if you can't get this in the bottom of your tank there, because I'm lucky to fit this facing outwards and I've got enough room to clear the, the, the element, but you can, if you can't get it in the bottom, you can fit it in the top in the expansion part of the tank and have your feed there, as long as it's got enough room in the T and you've got an inch fitting, as you can see you've got plenty of room around that to allow the water to not stop to restrict it and cause it to um, have low pressure. You've got plenty of room in that fitting to allow the pressure through. That's why we're going to use this. Not really like to use an inch barrel fitting, but it's the only thing that's going to fit there. Um, but I'm going to use a brass nipple in between to stop the metals from reacting. Okay, so I'll take you through this now. So I'll take you through you bit by bit. Okay, we're at the tricky part now where we undo the feed. I'm just going to bowl out just so you can see. You're going to get a little bit of water out of this feed because the water's level to the bottom of there. We'll put that way out and we're just unscrewing this one now. And we'll take this out in a minute, I'll show you how that bit goes back into that tank. Now as you can see I've made the T piece up, I've screwed the element in, and there's the cable for it, it's going to go down under the floor for me because I've got a void that I can connect it up to. Now I'm going to make this T piece up the bottom of this because we mustn't allow hot water to go up the coal feed into the roof tank because uh, it's not a very nice thing to do, you've got to keep that water up there nice and cold. Um, you, it's one of those things about Legionnaires, you could, could start it off with a warm roof tank. I know they get warm in the summer anyway, but we don't want to aggravate things, so we'll take that cold feed down, then we're going to come back up on this pipe, so we've got a U-shape to stop the heat from going back up there and keep it straight into the tank. This element's only just fitted with this on, because it's an extremely thin tank, it's only 15 inches in diameter. One of the old ones. Most tanks to be 18 inch um, sizes, you'll have no problem with that at all. Um, we'll go in dead easy. So we'll carry on with the next stage. Uh, now you can see the, uh, the completed job. The element is screwed in to the T, into the tank. We have a T piece going down and back up. And the reason for that dip down an arch is to stop the hot water from going up into the roof tank. We don't want to warm that up, we just want to warm up the tank. Uh, and that's the hardest part really, This getting this element in is probably the most difficult. Um, as I say, if it proves too difficult, you want to get a plumber in to do that bit, still be worth doing. And don't forget, if it won't go in the bottom there, you can always put it in the expansion at the top. Uh, and that's it for the plumbing part, so I hope you're alright with that. Well, there is the finished article, as it should look. If you can get it into your cold feed, the bottom of your storage tank. Yeah. Okay, welcome back. And uh, we're going to do the next part of the operation, um, which is to put the solar panel here. I'm going to put mine up on the wall there. Um, obviously, if you can get it up on the roof, obviously it's faster, better. You know, it will be. Uh, you'll get more sun. But as this is a kind of DIY project, and it's meant to be for the average guy, um, I'm going to put mine on the wall there. Um, it will sort of be under there, a bit protected from the weather. Um, I'm south facing, so the sun will shine straight down on the panel anyway. Um, so I'll still get the full sun. Um, so I'm going to put mine there as a DIY project. Perhaps if I can find someone later on, a builder, to put it up on the roof tiles, I will. So my panel's here. Um, this is the panel. I've got two brackets on there. One there, and I've got this one on the bottom there is comes with it um, they're bolted on the back and they're at an angle so when the panel goes up like that it 
can be at an angle to face the sun. Catch as many rays as we can. So right now we'll have uh, a little gap and I'll drill the holes. And the next time I'll show you the panel up on the wall. We now have the, uh, the panel on the wall. As you can see, I've got it secured. Leave brackets here at the top and there. It might not be the position I want. I may have to move it. The wife might not like it here, but uh, I'll put it here because my wires are going down through that vent hole there, through into where the battery and all the girks are going to be. So um, that's where it's going to be for me, for now anyway. And um, I'll get back to you shortly, the next stage. <clears throat> okay, here we have our thousand watt power inverter which I'm using which is more than ample for our 300 watt element um, it should easy to do the job and cope with it uh, and on the left here we have our solar regulator and you can see that it's quite simple the connections that shows the solar panel and the battery um, so it's fairly simple to do um, so we're going to get these now wired up and get them in position I'm lucky because I've got this underfloor void that I can use uh, which is what I'm using but most of you will probably have to use the loft so Okay, I just thought I'd show you the um, the finished wired thing, um, and as you can see, our connections are all made there. We have a, a charge light on, so our solar panel is bringing in some charge. I've tested it anyway with a voltmeter, and it, it does say it is. Uh, the battery is is virtually fully charged. It needs a bit. I I drained it a bit earlier doing some other things with it, so we'll wait for the free lights to come on. Uh, then we should get our load light on, um, that should then power our inverter. Um, now this inverter is going to have a, a time clock on it so that we can um, switch the light, the heating element uh, to come on overnight. Um, but all this lot is going to go downstairs there under the void with the battery uh, and um, we'll see how it goes and uh, get back to you.